Blah, blah, blah. Whatever you say. Welcome. And today we'll dive into a couple of great malicious compliance stories and their reactions. Coming up we have. Next week, I'm going to fire you. Plus we have. Don't touch the jukebox till all of entitled customer songs have played. Fine by me. I just know you're gonna love these stories, so this should be a fun session. Hi, this is Derek, I just put, the drama llama, Fred, back in his pen so that I can do this quick video for you with some of the stuff that Fred found on Reddit earlier today. If this is your first time watching our videos, help me out by watching to the end, and then giving me some feedback in the comment area below. I do respond, to every single one, so don't be shy. And if you want more of these videos daily, don't forget to like and subscribe, with notifications turned on for this channel. Oh boy, let's get ready for some malicious stories. Getty's thesis posted. Next week, I'm going to fire you. Worked for a poopy airline company. Let's just make up a name. United Blair Lines. At this company they started a smaller company that could hire and train people to run the planes, but pay them way less at certain airports. Where my colleagues at other airports were making over $20 per hour, I was getting paid $10.25 for the same and sometimes more work. It honestly would scare you to know how little the people, who are the ones that make sure your plane takes off safely are paid. All of us had two to three jobs to be able to pay rent, and we were all in the job for the benefits. Free flights to anywhere in the country on standby. Anyway I had a boss, we'll call him Jim. I could tell many stories on how terrible of a boss he was. But this one has actual malicious compliance. I had to go to the hospital from the airport because of intense pain in my stomach. It turns out that because of stress caused by that job, my intestines decided to stop functioning. Anyway I spend the day in the hospital. And then they gave me a note saying that I didn't have to work the next two days. I told Jim's boss that, since I hated talking to Jim. When I went back into work three days later. We had five people total to load all luggage, load the water, and push out five planes in a little over an hour. Already an incredible amount of work for so few people. We had our morning work meeting to discuss how effed we were. Then Jim asked me into his office. Your attendance is unacceptable. He said. Dumbfounded, I asked what he meant. You've been late a couple of times, and now missing the past three days. I said Jim, I have the note from the hospital. According to work policy, that shouldn't affect my attendance. I don't care what work policy says. I'm going to fire you. Again I cited work policy since we were protected by a union. I said Jim you have to give me an attendance warning, before you're allowed to fire me for attendance. This is the first time I'm hearing about attendance, so you can't fire me right now. Jim said it doesn't matter, I'm going to give you a warning right now. And when I get back from vacation next week, you're going to be fired. Now go back to work, my decision is final. So, I told my co-workers what happened. Then I decided alright well if next week he's firing me, I'll just leave now. Even though their day was about to be effed. Since now four people were working five planes, they all said at this place, get out of here. So I left and went to get breakfast, this all happened at 4 am. As I'm enjoying my meal, Jim calls me. I happily ignore. He calls three more times and then texts me asking where I was at. I told him you fired me, why would I keep working for you? No response. I try to soak in the sight of Jim running between planes like a chicken with his head cut off. I don't imagine any plane took off on time that morning. I get a call from HR, and the union rep, and the general manager, who is Jim's boss. They all said Jim was wrong and asked me if I could come back to work it out. But quitting felt so good. And I felt such weight lifted off my shoulders thinking about not working there anymore. So I never went back. Some more info. Although this isn't so satisfying. It's more a testament of United Blair Line's complete lack of ethics. Jim got in really big trouble when he had a guy who had a shoulder injury and had a note and told Jim several times he couldn't do super heavy labor. Jim sent him to the bag room by himself anyway. Imagine having to lift 300 to 750 to 70 pound bags over your head per hour. All while running between bag carts and the belt. Needless to say the guy tore his shoulder and had to get surgery on it. They still didn't fire Jim. Instead they promoted him to manage the workers who did ticketing and no manual labor. As far as I know, 
Jim still works for United. My co-worker still cannot move the way he used to two years later. What are your thoughts on Getty's thesis story? Please share in the comments below. Here's how some Reddit members reacted to this story. Medical Snow Ninja reacted with That's a pretty poopy union. If they can't even stop Jim. Also, F Jim. Meatface Malone reacted with It sounds like Off didn't try to go to the union. And once the union figured out what happened, they were prepared to backtrack on Jim's BS. Reaper CDN reacted with Your union is really bad. An injury due to ignoring medical restrictions and fired without cause. And Jim is still supervisor. What a bunch of great reactions. Now onto the next story posted by Burn the oil. Who posted? Don't touch the jukebox till all of entitled customer songs have played. Fine by me. I'm a bartender at a little hole in the wall watering hole. With a very regular and very loyal customer base. I had last night off, so I met up with a friend at another bar for a few drinks and some food. After supper we decide to walk to the bar I work at to cap off the evening. We get there, and there is a good energy going on. The music is a bit louder than usual, and there is maybe 10 patrons in the bar. We have this one customer who is extremely wealthy. And it's nothing for him to spend $200 $400 per night. Multiple times a week buying every one rounds. As such he's treated like royalty around there. So I'm sitting there having a really good time, enjoying a beer. And decide that I want to add a song to the jukebox. I grab a $5 bill and walk over, only to notice 63 credits showing on the screen. No big deal, I think, I'll just put my $5 in, request a few songs, and leave the 63 credits untouched. But no. Our wealthy regular, let's call him Jack, sees me perusing the jukebox, and comes up and physically pushes me away from it. I ask him what the F he thinks he's doing. He says those are his credits, and no one is allowed to touch the jukebox till he's used them up. I point out that I have my own $5, and no intention of using any of his credits. Nope, not good enough. No one is allowed to touch it till he's done with them. I know it's not worth arguing, so I step back, and he starts requesting songs till he's used up every single credit. Each song costs 2-5 to five credits, so he put in a lot of songs. Each song gives you the option to pay an extra 2 credits to have your song played next, but I noticed he wasn't using it. This particular brand of jukebox has an accompanying phone app. I didn't have it downloaded prior to last night but I do now. I calmly sat down at my table with my friend, and put my plan in motion. I go to the app store, find the app, download, install it, create an account, and purchase $10 worth of credits. I request two songs, and pay the extra two credits to fast track them. I sit there in quiet anticipation, and I can see that Jack is starting to get into a groove. With the music he'd requested, Vietnam Rock. His heart gloriously sinks when Bomb 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 by Sam and then the Womp comes on. No big deal, guys, his song must be next. Nope, it's Wannabe by the Spice Girls. He sits down, dejected. I quickly purchase another $20 in credits, and request. Baby by Justin Bieber. Live in La Vida Loca by Ricky Martin. Axel F by Crazy Frog. Foil by Weird Al Yankovic. And fast track every one of them. Partway through Foil. I notice Jack sulking in his chair. So I purchase another $20 in credits, and proceed to request. Never going to give you up by Rick Astley. Who let the dogs out, Barking Mad Remix, by Baja Men. Numa Numa by Ozone. Pop Harl Americano by Yolanda Be Cool. And Star Wars Cantina March by John Williams. They're starting to realize something is up. So Jack and a few staff who were on last night convene at the jukebox to try to figure it out. At this point the cantina march is playing. They turn the jukebox off. Then back on again. Doop 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 doop. They turn it off. Then back on. Doop 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 doop. Each time picking up where it left off. I can't hold my laughter, and let out a muted chuckle. One of my coworkers catches on. And comes over with her phone in her hand with the app open. And shoves it in my face with a how f and dare you. Yada yada yada. I quietly get up, down my last mouthful of beer. Put my jacket on, and walk out without a word. 
I walk down the street to a greasy spoon that our staff and customers are regulars at due to proximity. I sit down, order a beer and a burger, and proceed to log back into the app. I purchase another $10 worth of credits and fast track all I want for Christmas by Mariah Carey. And Mickey by Tony Basil is one last fight me to Jack. I can only imagine the fallout I'm going to face Monday afternoon when I show up to work, but whatever. My $40 was no less valid than his. And no one customer gets to commandeer the tunes for the entire night. And physically block anyone else from touching it. Side note, yes, I did realize partway through my shenanigans. That I could have just requested What's New Pussycat by Tom Jones multiple times. But by then I was too deep in. Call an update, showed up for my shift tonight. Same co-workers were there. Jack was there. No one said anything to me. Not even Jack. In fact, Jack even bought me a shot tonight. Sorry to be anticlimactic. But it doesn't look like anything is going to happen. What are your thoughts on? Burn the oil story? Please share in the comments below. Here's how some Reddit members reacted to this story. Pretty Persuasions reacted with When I would be closing bartender The particular jukebox we used had a remote to go in And look for any unused credits at the end of the night Typo negative at 4 am always sounded better when free LOL Okuma reacted with My brother cooks for Waffle House When his servers start acting a fool He will go to the jukebox with a $20 bill and hold it up They know what that means then if they don't cut the poop, they'll be listening to Barbie Girl on repeat for an hour or more. And finally, Muasan Squirrel reacted with. So here's the thing. Not a single effin thing can happen to your employment as part of this. You went to a bar as a patron, not a staff. You used the jukebox as intended, as a patron. You were in no way acting in your employed capacity. And this should not have any repercussions on your employment. Well, there you have it. A perfectly great set of reactions from a bunch of upstanding citizens. Help support this channel by smashing the like and subscribe buttons. And hit that silly little bell as well to ensure you get the latest videos as they come out. Fred is always finding stuff for me to post regularly. So this is Derek signing off. Thanks for watching. Good grief, it sounds like Fred is out of his pen again. He must have found more stories for me to share with you. See you soon.